I have been asked about my standard workflow with Bumble Up Seed or similar programs. So I've put together a short video showing you some basic features like image editing and how to transfer sketches from Fusion 360 or similar CAD programs. This doesn't cover all the software's tools of course, but it should at least give you a better start with your own projects. Of course you can also simply use the navigation to jump to the section that interests you most. If anything is missing or you found better methods, feel free to mention them in the comments below. You can easily import images into the program via the menu or by dragging and dropping them from your desktop or other folders and then roughly scale them. More on that later. After importing, you can use a few shortcuts in the editing menu to manipulate the image, reducing it to specific lines and shades of grey to create the final pattern. It's best to experiment a bit and run some tests to get a feel for it. Furthermore, the same menu offers the option to remove the background or eliminate large bright areas so that the laser doesn't have to cover them at low intensity. This ultimately saves time. Now let's take a look at some other basic features. You can quickly insert and adjust various shapes including simple rectangles and circles. If you need specific dimensions, you can enter them freely at the top. Keep in mind, however, that the X and Y dimensions are linked by default and always scale uniformly. To change this, simply click the lock icon, then you can adjust the dimensions freely and precisely. In this example, I adjust both side lengths of the rectangle so that they are the same length. Furthermore, you can round all the corners of your shapes with just one value. This is particularly useful when the, for example, creating business cards and wanting the edges to last longer and feel better in the hand. These individual patterns can then be attached so that the program recognizes them as a single unit. With the array tool, you can easily duplicate or specifically arrange the patterns you have created. In this case, I created two patterns in the x direction and two patterns in the y direction. These are then created as independent assemblies. The next useful tools are the QR code generator and the text creation tool. With the QR code generator you can simply enter your link, Wi-Fi password or short text and you'll get a ready-made QR code. The text tool lets you create free texts and offers many options for customizing. The offset tool allows you to add a border around your designs. This is very useful if you want to have some space around the actual design or if you're creating stickers. Since the offset is only created around individual shapes, you'll need to combine the two designs, your error code and text in this case, then you can create a border for both together. However, it looks even better if you create an extra border using a rectangle or one of the provided shapes. Once you've done that, you can simply attach all the shapes together again. Here I'll quickly show you the difference, first with attached shapes and then with the shapes are listed individually. In the next chapter I'll show you how to create vector based shapes from simple images. This is because you can only process images in a very limited way. First you can use the familiar editing tool to remove parts that you don't want to have in the final design. Here for example I'm removing a small line from my logo. I also remove the white background using the automatic removal tool. This is optional at this stage though. The real magic happens with the tracing tool. Here you can create a vector based outline of the shape imported as an image. Using the three sliders you can generate an outline ranging from very rough to as smooth as possible. Once you are satisfied simply confirm the process and delete the now unnecessary image. For a better organization, you can then split the created shape into individual patterns using the split tool. You can easily delete any unwanted elements created inside or outside the actual shape and reassemble the remaining patterns as needed. Next I'll show you how I handle more complex designs with multiple materials or colors. Here for example I imported the skull from one piece as an image and simply converted it into vectors. But as you can see, you initially only have the design as a complete pattern. So to be able to create the design in different colors later, we first need to break it down into its individual components. 
After an initial disassembly, we obtain the basic shapes, which are not connected, and the connected skull, which can be further broken down into its individual parts. We copy the letter, so we can disassemble it further later. Then we reassemble the first parts, so that I can later produce them in a single color. After splitting the continuous pattern, we now have many small shapes. We delete all of them that we don't need and keep only the ones that we want to use later. Here I keep the background in order to make it white if necessary, the inner parts of the head in yellow and the band in red. Then I select all the unnecessary parts and delete them. Now I have all the necessary shapes, but I still need to prepare them so I can easily produce them in different colors. I can do this by creating different batches to which I assign different materials, or in this case colors. If I now go to my preparation view, you can see that only the shapes I want to create for each color are displayed. I can select the individual batches on the side now. This way you can easily replace the material after each pass and still have all the components saved in one file. Speaking of colors, you can also assign colors to the individual shapes and adjust their order. However, the order in which the parts are later produced is still automated, as you can see here. I personally only use this for a better overview when working with many parts. Or if you have difficulty seeing the grey outlines on your material. Here for example switching from grey to yellow helped a lot in positioning the parts correctly. And now finally to the main point of the video, transferring your designs from a cut program into a DXF file. There are several methods for this, but I'll show you the one that I find the simplest and clearest. You can simply complete your designs and then create a new sketch on the surface you want to produce later. That's all there is to it. You could of course also create a projection of the surface. In Fusion use the PK. However, if you export the sketch incorrectly, you'll end up with duplicate lines. Please also make sure that only the outlines of the surface are transferred. Radii extending from the surface and chamfers can lead to a negative offset. It's best to remove these beforehand. You can now name the sketch appropriately and export it as a DXF file by right clicking. Your clean vector drawing is now complete, simple, clear and always up to date when you go back in the history and make changes. Of course you can also export simple drawings, not just surfaces as DXF files. However, be careful not to include your construction lines in the export if you don't want them included as these are treated as regular lines in the Bamboo Suite. You can then easily import the created DXF files into the Bamboo Suite via drag and drop and edit them further. As shown in the basics section, I've further broken down the imported vectors into individual parts so I can then assign the different laser processing methods. Outlines are cut, fold lines are prepared with the laser line and the semicircles in the middle, for removing the paper insert, are also cut. You can also easily add any logos or other engravings at this point, if needed. Then I assign the material to be processed. You can fine tune the laser settings for each part in the lower section of the window. For many materials, there is also a rough review available. However, for multiple parts or repeated use of the same material, you can also make your changes directly in the material selection menu. With my 10 watt laser module, with my 10 watt laser module, I usually set the laser cuts to be slightly less intense, faster, and the engravings to be slightly more intense, slower. The result should then meet your expectations. If not, double check your laser settings or the intensity settings. Finally, here's a quick guide to applying and removing stickers. First, the surfaces must be degreased and dried properly. For precise application, you can use transfer film to apply the stickers. This is especially important for multi-part stickers. Position the stickers correctly and then apply them from one side with some pressure. Simultaneously removing the backing paper bit by bit. Press the sticker down firmly to ensure it adheres well. You can also apply a little heat for better adhesion.
The same applies to removal. Since I didn't have electricity nearby, I used hot water instead of a heat gun. That worked really well with the removable vinyl films. I didn't have any adhesive residue. If you do have any, you can usually remove it easily with a little oil. Of course you can also apply the stickers without transfer film. However, that's a bit riskier. I hope my video was helpful. If so, please give it a thumbs up and subscribe so I can continue making videos like this. You can also share your own tips in the comments. Have fun!